6.7 optimization problems. So there's are, these are basically story problems where the idea is to find a maximum or minimum, um, but it might not be a phrase that way, but there's probably those keywords or, or, or it's a good chance that the, either of those keywords are gonna be in there. But anyways, um, just basically the basic steps with story problems, read and understand the problem, draw a diagram, introduce notation. So you let X be this. Usually you're gonna let, so for example, you let Q be something that you wanna find, or it could be like some other letter, it doesn't have to be Q. So, and then you express this Q in terms of other symbols and you try to get it, eliminate all but one of the variables. So you have Q equals F of X. Okay, and then, then it becomes a problem of trying to find the absolute maximum or minimum of this F of X. So you use the techniques and methods that you learned in 4.1 and 4.3 to finding absolute maximum or minimums of values of F. Um, and sometimes it's on a closed interval. You kind of have to look at the context of the problem. Um, a lot of story problems, you know, this quantity has to be positive, this X has to be positive, so on. Okay, so just kind of like look at the context of the problem to figure out where to go from there. Okay, so let's do some examples. And then the first one is this number one. Consider uh, this problem, find two, two numbers whose sum is 25 and whose product is a maximum. Okay, this is a little bit confusing, but so the, the table is kind of straightforward. So basically you want two numbers, they have to add up to, it's like for example, one and 24, they add up to 25. Their product is 24. Two and 23 also add to 25, their product is 46. Three and 22, their product is gonna be 66. So that's, let's see here. So 66 is what's gotta go right, right there. Okay, four and 20, these kind of just, these just kind of, go down in value because these are going up by one every time. So these has to go down by one every time. So that the, that's always adding up to 25. And then you just calculate these products. That's 84. This is um, 100. Six times 19 is 114. Seven times 18. Uh, 126. You could use a calculator. That's what I did to come up with all these values. Uh, 144, 150, and 11 times 14 is 154. 13, 12 times 13 is 156. Okay. Um, so that's the table there. That's just a bunch of integer values that do that. And in fact, it's all positive integer combinations that do that. Okay, so you're trying to find, you're trying to find the uh, the product as a maximum. And out of all these values here, this is the highest one that there is. Um, so on the basis of the evidence in your table, estimate the answer to the problem. Uh, and that is gonna be 12 and 13 is what is what does it. Um, that was kind of confusing what they're asking for, but that's what they're asking for. Out of all these combinations in the table, that and that, which one gives you the maximum? It's 12 and 13. Um, and then part B is to use calculus to solve the problem. So essentially, if you let X equal the first number, okay, then um, the second number is 25 minus X. Okay, because if they're gonna add up to 25, then this, you're gonna need that and that to add up to 25, and they do, okay, because this is, so if the first number is X, the second number has to be 25 minus X. Okay, so now the product, the product, P, is equal to X times 25 minus X, or 25X minus X squared. And so, you take the derivative and that's 25 minus 2x and you set that equal to zero because that's that's the only way to get a critical number um also the, the endpoints are endpoints um are x equals zero and x equals 
25. But in either of these cases, the product is going to be zero because this is zero. Then the 25 and X is going to be zero. So the products are going to be zero in these cases. So the the maximum is going to occur when X when X satisfies this equation here when it's a critical number. Okay, so negative 2X is negative um, 25 uh, divided by negative 2, and you get negative you get positive 12.5. Okay, so the answer is 12.5 is the first number, and the second number is also going to be 12.5. Okay, now of course. A lot of you could figure this out from the table, okay? But somehow, for some strange reason, you're not allowed to do that. So well, that's okay. So this is gonna be, these are gonna be the answers though for this problem. This is just sort of an introduction to the topic. Um, so let's go, let's do something a little more significant. Number 25, what is the maximum vertical distance between the line y equals x plus 42 and the parabola y equals x squared? Okay. So for negative six, x is between negative six and seven. Now it turns out that what this looks like is, um, let me drop a diagram of what this looks like. So this line right here, y equals x plus 42, it has an, a y-intercept of 42 and it has a slope one, right? So it's gonna be something like that. And the parabola is gonna be something like this. And it turns out that, let's see here, when X is um, seven, that's 49, that's also 49. So these, these guys intersect right here at seven comma, 49. And then over here, uh, when this is 6, this is 36. I mean, negative 6, I'm sorry, this is 36, but this is also 36. So negative 6, 36. So they intersect, they actually intersect in these points on this interval here. Okay. Okay. So the distance. The vertical distance is going to be the the line minus the parabola. Okay, it's going to be so for a given value of x, this y value is x plus 42. This y value is x squared. This distance is this top y uh, y value minus the bottom y value. Okay. So that's going to be it. So that's x plus 42 minus x squared is this distance here. Okay. So um, what's we got? We got, we got negative x squared plus x plus 42. So you're going to take the derivative, and that's negative 2x plus 1, and set that equal to 0. And um, that Solving this, you're going to get, uh, bring that over there, divide by negative one half, and you get x equals one half. That's where it's gonna, that's where the maximum, so the maximum vertical distance is gonna be like right here. That maximum vertical distance, x equals one half. And we're supposed to actually find, this is, this is where it happens. This is where it happens. But actually, what it is is you plug a one half into the dis this distance formula. Okay, so just plug it in one half here and a one half there. And let's see, we got 42. Okay, this is one half. This is one. So one half minus the fourth is. One fourth, so 42.25 is going to be the answer. Okay, let's look at number three the rate at which photosynthesis 
takes place for a species of phytoplankton is modeled by the function p equals 110i over i squared plus i plus 9, where i is the light intensity. For what light intensity is p a maximum? Okay, so now as, so you, you can notice that if i is zero, so the light intensity has got probably got to be somewhere between zero and infinity. If i is zero, then this is going to be zero. And also the limit as i goes to infinity of p of i, of p of i is also going to be zero because this is higher order than this is a higher order than that one, right? Okay. You could also use L'Hopital's rule to come to that conclusion if you want, if you don't remember that. Okay, so the maximum, this is going to be at a critical number. That's going to happen at a critical number because of this. Okay, because it's zero, sort of zero at the endpoints. Although, you know, going to infinity is not really endpoint, but, you know, you're not going to attain a maximum at the end of the endpoints. This is really not endpoint, but it goes to zero there. So you will have a maximum because you know that in between these numbers, it's po it's positive. In between zero and infinity, it, this is going to be a positive number. Okay, so it will have a maximum. And this will happen at a critical number. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is take the derivative and set it equal to zero. That's going to give us the critical numbers. Okay, either where the derivative is zero or undefined. Okay, so with quotient rule, so low d high. So the derivative of the of the top is 110, and there's this low the, de the denominator minus, and then high d low. So that's 110 i times the, the derivative of this, which is 2 i plus one. And then, because the derivative of i squared is 2i, derivative of i is 1, derivative of 9 is 0. All over the square of what's below. So this is all squared right here. Okay, now this is never 0. So it becomes to figure out where this is going to be 0, this numerator. Okay? So we can factor, so just take the numerator. Just set that equal to zero. Okay. So we can factor the 110 out. Okay, that leaves us i squared plus i plus nine minus okay, factoring this 110 out, we have two i squared minus i equals zero. Um we can disregard the 110 and just look at this right here now. Okay, so we have, what do we got? Negative i squared. Um, whoa, this is nice. Look at this. These i's cancel. Ooh. Negative i squared plus 9 equals 0. And this, of course, is the same as i squared minus 9 equals 0. And um, you could factor this if you want. And that equal, it's still equal to zero, so i equals three, or i equals negative three. And I'm assuming that light intensity cannot be, cannot be negative, so we'll throw that out. Um, even if it were, that would make the whole thing negative, so it wouldn't be a maximum, it would probably be the minimum. And so, uh, that's the I, an intensity of three is gonna be, give you the maximum rate of so photosynthesis. Okay, great. And then of course, this is all in units there. Sometimes you have to worry about units if they don't, if they're just conflicting units. Okay, let's move along to number four. If uh, 30,000 square centimeters of material is available to make a box with a square base and an open top, find the largest possible volume of the box. Okay, so you have this amount of material and you're going to make a square, the box is going to have a, a square base. So 
maybe so that's gonna be your box maybe something like that okay maybe something like that okay well this is probably the worst box I've ever drawn okay anyways so you have that box there and you have this much material but uh, let's make the base this it's a square base so um, x equals the length of a side. So that means that this is x and that's x. And then if it's and then open top, we'll set um, we'll make h equal the height of the box. Okay, so the height right there. Now the you have you have um, you've got thirty thousand of material. Okay, so let's so let's handle that first. Um, because at this point, okay, let me just point out right at this point, you want to, you want the largest possible volume. Okay, so the volume is going to be x squared h. Okay, this is two variables. And so we want to reduce that to one variable. We use this information to reduce one of these variables. Okay, 30,000 materials. So for the materials, you have the bottom. That's going to be x squared in the area. That's the area of the bottom. And then you have sides of the box. You have four sides. And each of the sides, the area, each of the sides is x times h. Okay, that's got to add up to 30,000. Now, this right here is much easier to solve for h than it is to solve for x. So we're gonna we're gonna solve this for h, um, and then we're gonna plug that h right into here into the volume. Okay, so 4xh is 30,000 minus x squared. That means h is 30,000 minus x squared all over uh, 4x like that. Okay, and like I said, this is going to plug in for this H right here. Okay, and then, and then it's going to be all in terms of just X. So now we have only X's, so it's just a, a v, volume as a function of X. And this X, is going to cancel one of those off. Okay, so uh, we can write it as uh, what? One fourth factor of one fourth out. So that's, we'll distribute that, this x in. So it's 30,000 x minus x cubed. Okay, there's our volume right there. Now, the end point. Are going to give you so the endpoints would be when x is zero, for example, which is just going to give you a box with no volume because if x is zero, then that's gone. And then the other endpoint would be when x is maximized and and it just takes up just a flat thing, and that's also going to give you a volume of zero because the height will be zero. Okay, so the maximum is going to the or the largest possible volume is going to happen at a critical point of this function. So we take the derivative. And derivative of that is 30,000. And the derivative of that is 3x squared. Okay, so it's, that's being set equal to zero. We can factor a three out. This um, right here is going to, so basically this is this right here, or x squared equals 10,000. So x is either plus or minus 100. The minus is out, so x is 100. That's the only critical number. In the interval. That's the only, only critical number that makes sense. So this has to be the maximum. 
where the maximum occurs. Okay. So here, okay, so in the previous problem, I just said basically find the value that gives you the maximum. Here it's actually asking, you have to read the instructions. It says find the largest possible volume of the box. Okay. So, um, so what you're going to do at this point is is you is plug this 100 into here. Okay, so we have 100 for that plugging into there, and then we have um, 30,000 minus 100 squared all over four. Okay, that's plugging in 100 here and 100 there. That's gone, by the way. Okay, so um, we have a hundred. Here, this is gonna this is gonna be ten thousand. So we got thirty thousand minus ten thousand. That's gonna be twenty thousand over four. And what does that work out to? A hundred times oops, twenty thousand divided by four is gonna be five thousand. So fifty thousand. Okay, so 50,000 will be the answer. Let me write, rewrite it over here, 50,000. Okay, um, any questions or concerns about that? Um, I just plugged that into the answer and it's saying that 50,000 is not correct. Oh wait, it's five hundred thousand. Dang, what are this also minor ship for? It's five hundred thousand, I'm sorry. Can't do multiplication. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay, let's go to number five. Find the points on the ellipse, on this ellipse, that are farthest away from this point. Okay, now, um, the distance squared from a point x, y and a point one, zero is equal to x minus one squared plus y squared. Okay, so um, let me, when it's asking for the, this is a, when it's, uh, when it's asking for this, this is farthest away, that means it's a distance. And a lot of times it is um, or I just say sometimes a lot of times, but a, sometimes it's easier to um, maximize the the distance squared. Okay, instead of the distance. Okay, so the distance squared, because the distance has is the square root of all this, right? But if you're maximizing the distance squared, then it's the same as maximizing the distance. It's the same, that, as far as maximizations, the same values are gonna maximize, that maximize the distance squared will maximize the distance. The same values that, max, that minimize the distance squared will minimize the distance. Okay, so yeah. So you might as well just work with the distance squared, okay? And that's, that's the value right there. Now, your restriction is that the points be on the parabola. So here, here we have a function, 
here we have a function basically that we want to maximize. Okay, but it's got two variables, so we can't just take the derivative. But we know that this that these values right here have to satisfy this. This, this the x and the y from here have to satisfy this equation. And so we can solve this equation for y squared. It's y squared is five minus x squared. And then we take that and we plug it into here and for this y squared. See, we don't even have to find y because it, this is just a y squared. So we just plug this in for y squared. Okay, so now we have, now we have, um, uh, let's see here. I'll just write that as d, d squared, okay? The distance squared is x minus one squared plus, and then we substitute this in right here, like that. And then we want, so it's basically we want to maximize this. So we take the derivative, take the two down, Reduce this thought by one to one power to one. Then derivative inside is just one, so that's just that. The derivative of that's zero. The derivative of that's minus two x. Okay, set that equal to zero. So, wait, something's wrong. Oh, I I see what's wrong. Um, this is minus 5x squared, okay? So that means that this is minus 10x, okay? So this is 2x minus 10x minus 2 equals 0. So that's negative 8x equals Two, that means x is um, negative one fourth. Okay, so x is negative one fourth. Now, now, what we're going to do is we're going to plug this negative one fourth into here. Yeah, y squared equals five minus five times negative one fourth squared. Okay, so y squared is going to be 5 minus 5 over 16. Okay, let's see here. So let's see, 5 times. Five times 16, that's 80. So that's 80, 16. So five is 80 over 16. And so you have y squared equals uh, 75 over 16. That means y is going to be, extract square roots, what's this, three times 25? 25 is a perfect uh, square, three is not. So let's see, five, the square root of 25 is 5, and then the square root of 3, and then the square root of 16 is 4, so it's going to be that. It's going to be plus or minus that. Okay, so then the answer is going to be, give me two answers. So the first one is negative 1 fourth, comma, negative 5 root 3 over 4, and the second answer will be negative one fourth and then positive five root three over four. Okay, any questions about that? Okay, let's go to number six. Okay, so here you have a 23 meter long wire, piece of wire, 
and it's going to cut it into two pieces. One piece is you're going to bend it to a square, and the other into an equilateral triangle. Okay, so part A, how much wire should be used for the square in order to maximize the total area? Okay, and then the part B is how much wire should be used for the square in order to minimize the total area? Okay, so it's asking for how much wire should be used in the square. So that, that means that um, because it's asking in terms of the square, that means that we should let X equal amount of wire for the square. Okay, and then that's going to mean that since it's 23 total, that means that 23 minus, minus X is for the triangle. Oh, look, I just drew a triangle instead. Okay. So, um, let's see here. We want to maximize the total area. So, if if these are if this is for the square, then the area of the square is going to be x squared. Okay, and then you have the area of the triangle. Um, let's figure that out. So if we have an equilateral triangle, let me draw it bigger. Okay, so you have an equilateral triangle. Let me come over here and do it right here. Okay, so you have an equilateral triangle. And let's say each of these sides is Y. In the end, Y is going to be 23 minus X, but let's just leave it at Y for now. Okay, so the area is one half the base times the height. Now, if it's equilateral, that means this is going to be 60 degrees. And so if we drop a altitude right here, then that's going to be 30 degrees, and this will be 90. Um, the base is this Y is Y. Okay, and then the height will be this right here, but we know that this is y over two. So this is a, so this, this, is, this 30, 60, 90 triangle is one, two, root three. So that means that this is going to be root three times y over two. So this is like our one, this is root three y over two. Okay, so this is gonna be um, root three over four, Y squared, but then why is, why is this? Okay, so um, we just write that in there. So it's 23 minus X squared. Okay, so that's gonna be your area, depending on X right here. Okay, so now the um, next step, is to take uh, the derivative. So that's 2x. And then, oh, this is, okay, the derivative of this inside is gonna be negative one. So that's actually gonna end up being minus. So this two comes down, it reduces this four down to a two. And then, this two gets reduced to one, and then the derivative inside is negative one, so it comes out right there. Okay, and you're gonna set that equal to zero. Okay, now, we want to solve for x. So let's see, we got two x minus um, 23 root three over two plus root three over two X. And set that equal to zero. Okay, so let's see here. We can combine these together.
factor an x out of here. And that goes over here. Okay, now let me really quickly um, Oh wait, oh, okay, you guys, I made a huge mistake here. I'm really sorry about that. Um, uh, let me see if I can fix it. Okay, so I made a mistake. This 23 minus X has to be distributed among all three sides. So it turns out that this is 23 over three. Okay, so that means that this is divided by Um, so this is, there's a three right there, which means there's a, um, that this is, you can pull this out as a nine. And so there'll be a times nine right there. And then this will be, this will be 18. Okay. And then of course, right here as well, that's 18. Okay, so now let me, um, let me put this, wait a second, this is wrong too. Dang. Those are both 18 as well. And that's an 18. So that's an 18 right there. Ah. Okay, so let's say, let's see if this works. So let's take let's put that in the calculator. 23 times the square root of 3 divided by 18. And that's in turn all divided by two plus square root of three. No, that doesn't work. Oh dear. Let's see here. Oh, I also made a mistake with this, this, this one. So let me write that here. So this means that the sides of the square are each going to be x over 4. Because okay, there's four sides and the total amount of wire for the square is X. So that's X over four. So this will be over 16. Okay, which means this will be um, over eight. Oh, this is the worst problem ever. Okay, which means that this is also X over eight as well. This is the worst mistake I've ever made which means that this is X over eight as well. And that's one eighth right there, which means that this is one eighth as well. Ah. 
Okay, let's see if that works. This is like the worst. Ah, okay, that doesn't seem to work either. Actually, I think I have it right. Actually, I think we might have a problem. I might have it right. Just a second. Yeah, this is correct. Okay, so if you put this incorrectly into the calculator, not incorrectly, you get 10.00418 something. Okay, so that that means you're, that means that um, so now what you have to this is ten. So that's the only critical number is ten, right? Now, um, now what you have to do in order to find these two questions, you have to figure out which which one does the ten go with, and then which is the ten the maximum or the ten the minimum? Now it probably if if you're doing going about this intuitively, then hmm. Well, it could go either way. So what you want to do is critical numbers and endpoints. Okay, so here, let's just, let's just put a 10 there. And then we'll have the area right there. But you also have where all the 23 is going to the square and all, and then none of it's going to the square as well. Okay, so if you have 10 going to the square, then um, Then I'm just rounding this to ten. So if you if you put a ten into here, you get a hundred over sixteen plus, and then over here it's going to be root three over four times thirteen over three squared. Okay, so that's going to give you.
Let me calculate that out. That gives you approximately uh, 14.38. Okay, that's probably 14.38. Now, if you put all of it to the square, then that means that this is 20 be, gonna be 23 squared over 16. which gives you approximately 33.0625. If you put none of it to the square, then that's gonna be zero. It's all gonna be area from the rectangle. So you put a zero in here, and that's gonna be And that's going to give you 25.45, okay, approximately. Okay, so that means that um, this is the smallest value, this is the largest value. So that means this is maximum, and that one's minimum. Okay, so for the first part, when it says the maximize, that will be... Uh, 23. And the second part, the minimize, that was going to be 10. And so those are going to be the answers. Okay, uh, that was tough. Now, let's go to number seven. So here we have a boat that leaves the dock at 7 p.m. and travels due south at 20 kilometers per hour. Another boat has been heading due east at 15 and reaches the same dock at 8 p.m. How many minutes after 7 p.m. were the two boats closest together? Now, it's asking for this in terms of minutes, right? So, um, what you wanna do is you wanna put everything in terms of minutes. So 20 kilometers per hour, Um, that's one hour and 60 minutes, right? So that's going to be one third kilometer per minute, okay? Um, 15 kilometers per hour, you multiply by one hour over 60 minutes. That way the hours are going to cancel and you have one fourth kilometer per minute for those two things. Okay, now, let me see. I guess I should use different colors for the different boats. So let me, let me change this one to green. Okay, so this left at 7 p.m. and is traveling due south. So at 7 p.m., it leaves the dock and it's going south, okay? So in terms of minutes after 7 p.m., this distance is going to be, in terms because it's asking in terms of minutes after 7 p.m., because that's, that's what the question's phrased as. Um, since it's traveling one third of a kilometer per minute, then, okay, so if we let, T equal the number of minutes past 7 p.m. Then this will have traveled when it is T minutes after 7 p.m. This will this distance is going to be one third T. Okay. Now let's go with this one. I'm gonna I'm changing this to green. This one's heading due east. It reaches this place at 8 p.m., okay? But at 7 p.m., it will be 15, this is gonna be 15 kilometers. Because it's traveling 15 kilometers per hour, right? So if it reaches here at, at um, 7 p.m., 
Now, if it reaches here at eight, that means at seven, it's 15 kilometers away, because in one hour, it went 15 kilometers. Okay, so that's 15. Now, its position at T minutes is going to be 15 minus one fourth T. Okay, this distance here. Okay, now, um, the distance squared, or the distance, you know, this is the distance squared, is going to be, so like if you have, if this is where the boat is right here, this boat, and that boat's there, then this distance will be, this distance here, the square of this distance will be the square of that one plus the square of that one. Okay, so it's going to be 15 minus 1 fourth t quantity squared plus 1 third t quantity squared. Okay, and that's in terms of t. So the distance squared prime, so you're going to take the derivative, and that, let's see, a 2 comes down. And then a negative one fourth comes out. Okay, here a two comes down. They shoot this is to one. This is, then a third comes out. Okay, and they're gonna set that equal to zero. So this is negative one half. So let's see here. We can distribute this negative one half in here. That's negative fifteen halves plus one eighth t plus what's this two ninth t equals zero. Hmm. Okay, let's so we have um one eighth plus two ninth t equals fifteen halves. Okay, um, let's see here. So we could just do this. That times this right here. It says to round it to the nearest um, nearest uh, minute. So we put that in the calculator. So 15 divided by two divided by one eighth plus two ninths. And this gives you 21.6. Okay, now, if T gets very large, as you can see, this, this boat here is just traveling this way, and this boat's going down. So the distance between them is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And also, if you if you track back back in time and this boat just goes back and that one goes up like that and goes up that way that, then their distance is getting larger and larger so this is going to be the time when the distance is a minimum which is what we want so the answer is going to be 22 so it says round it to the nearest minute 